going on. We have a rare opportunity yep. today. Uh, we have General David Petraeus standing by as the commander of the multinational forces in Iraq. He is joining us now live from Baghdad. General, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Uh, I guess quickly we'd like to start off by asking about some of today's news. Uh, as you know, General Lute is uh, in the middle of his confirmation hearings. He will be a war advisor for both Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, what does that mean for you and your command? Well, first of all, it means that a very close friend, uh, someone who knows combat, who knows this region, and who also knows Washington, will be our point man there, uh, a single point of contact for the issues that we have, uh, particularly with the interagency there in Washington. I think there are a lot of people who are confused, and the question has certainly come up. Uh, hasn't there always been a person who has been in charge of the coordination between uh, what's taking place in Iraq and Afghanistan? Well, there has. I think this gives that position uh, some additional emphasis, uh, some additional importance, and I think that he'll probably have authorities, as I understand it, uh, that individuals in the past in that position have not had. So we think this is a positive development uh, for those of us who are out here, and I know for those in Afghanistan as well. And General Petraeus, Tony Harris with Heidi Collins in Atlanta. Just want to turn your attention to some of the reporting this week from the New York Times, the suggestion from a number of, uh, quoting some commanders on the ground, that the troop buildup in Baghdad is not going as well as had been hoped that uh, the effort to secure the 23 neighborhoods targeted by the troop buildup is going a little more slowly than had been anticipated. What's your response? Well, Tony, I think in some cases that's correct. Uh, we achieved some early success uh, through the first several months of the effort. Uh, the sectarian murder and execution rate was cut by over two-thirds. And then we saw it come back a bit uh, during the month of May. Uh, this week it seems headed back down again, touch wood. Uh, but we clearly have some tough work to do. Uh, there have been some neighborhoods where we cleared, and we're literally going to have to go back in and do that, and we will. Uh, but I think it's important to remember that we're still a week and a half, two weeks away from having all of the surge forces even on the ground for the first time. We do have some aggressive plans to use those uh, to go after al-Qaeda and some of the sanctuaries in which they've been able to build and, and dispatch car bombs from uh, for some time. Uh, that won't be without a fight, but it is something that we must do mm. in the areas around Baghdad to provide better security for the people in Baghdad. So, General, just to be clear, you do not have all of your troops um, on the ground in country in Baghdad yet. That is correct. The fifth of the five surge brigades and the Marine Expeditionary Unit and the Combat Aviation Brigade are still positioning themselves uh, in Iraq as we speak or moving up from Kuwait. Uh, and again, they'll all be positioned and actually in operations in less than two weeks. General, we also had some reports yesterday, we reported here anyway, that uh, Turkish sol soldiers uh, were crossing into northern Iraq to fight uh, Kurdish militants there. Uh, reports have been denied. We recognize that. But what would it mean for U.S. strategy and the tactics in the region? Well, it certainly could mean a, a rise in some tensions there. Uh, interestingly, I talked to the Vice Chief of Defense Staff of, of Turkey uh, just two days ago. We have a relationship. We have uh, common interests, uh, not just with respect to the, the uh, terrorists who are up in the, the very large, tall mountains up in northern Iraq, but also, frankly, in what comes through Syria, because, as you know, foreign fighters have been able to move through Syria. And so we discussed how we might be able to help each other. Uh, but I think that the, uh, the Turkish military has taken some very prudent steps. They are poised to do what they deem is necessary uh, uh, if it comes to that. But they did not make any moves yesterday, as were originally reported. And something else that we're hearing uh, a little bit of information about. Uh, General Odierno, he revealed last week that the United States is talking with insurgents. In, in your opinion, is that helping? Oh, it is absolutely, yes. In fact, our strategy has always been with this new approach to try to determine who are the reconcilables out there among these groups that may have been in opposition to the coalition or to the government of Iraq and to separate them from the irreconcilables, the true extremists, the al-Qaeda and the extreme uh, secret cells of the militia. 
and then to try with the help of the government of iraq to make the reconcilable part of the solution instead of the problem and that has worked in anbar province what is taking place in anbar is almost breathtaking uh... in the last several months tribes that previously at the very least uh... turned a blind eye to what al qaeda was doing in that province uh... are now opposing al qaeda very vigorously and the level of violence in anbar has plummeted uh, although there clearly is still work to be done uh, particularly in eastern anbar province in in some areas inside uh... the city of fallujah and we will do that work as we get all the forces on the ground here uh... in the weeks and months ahead and general finally do you have perhaps irreconcilables within the iraqi uh, security forces here's the question do you have a problem with Iraqi police being a part of these teams working with insurgents, Iraqi police working with insurgents in planting some of these horrific, deadly uh, IEDs? Uh, Tony, there is no question but that some elements, uh, particularly of the uh, Ministry of Interior Forces, during the height of the sectarian violence during 2006 were what we call hijacked by certain uh, militia interests in particular. Uh, some of those undoubtedly remain within the force, uh, and as we identify those individuals, and we have, and we, uh, we then take action uh, with the Ministry of Interior against them. This minister has fired well over uh, 1,500, I believe it is, uh, members of Ministry of Interior forces. There are some more that need to go, uh, and uh, our partnership with him uh, indicates that he is willing to make those kinds of tough decisions and to discipline his force uh, when individuals are found to be acting against the government of Iraq or against their coalition partners. General David Petraeus, uh, we have so many more questions for you. Sure, you don't want to stick around for another half hour? Or so? <laughs> it is nice to see you, though. Well, we you know, we were just walking through the neighborhood in Baghdad, and we came upon the CNN house, believe it or not. Uh, All right, very good. The Minister of Foreign Affairs is outside there as well. Yes, we, we understood that to be the case. Uh, thank you so much for sitting down and sharing some time. of your thoughts with us. We certainly appreciate it.